everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're gonna do page two and page three and we're gonna do these side by side because the panels are trimmed out the same. So these are, um, that's page two and this is page three. So they're going to mirror each other and let me give you the measurements for these. So they're eight inches tall and you are going to put a tick mark at two and four and a half, two and four and a half. And that, again, I'm using my triangle to kind of keep consistent with the angles even though I may be changing the size of the panels. So you're gonna put a tick mark at two and one at uh, four, and um, that is after you fold in your hinge, okay? You're going to get two of those. One is gonna go on um, page two and one is gonna go on page three. And I forgot to put the tape on, so we'll do that right now. If you're new to the channel, this is my handy dandy tape tear tool that I cannot live without. And we sell them in our shop at www.scrapandcreate.com. And while I'm doing this, I wanna thank everybody for tuning in and really thank all our new subscribers. We've really grown a lot in the last month and I really appreciate that. And I'm sure it's because of comments view time and you guys are sharing and liking and all those things go a long way to help us keep this channel um, at the top of the list in terms of uh, YouTube sharing it with like-minded uh, crafters. Okay, so this is gonna go, um, both of these are gonna go toward the spine and they're gonna go flush with the edge of the, um, the pocket page. And I'm gonna go over that measurement one more time because it is a little bit different, but I think it's kind of cool. Um, I was really wanting to do something a little bit different. Okay, so again, you're gonna start with um, a panel that is four by eight, four by eight. Then you're going to put a tick mark at two and you're gonna come right down to the four and make that diagonal. You're gonna do that two times, one for page two and one for page three. So they're gonna look like this side by side. And then I'm gonna do some other stuff in here, but that's essentially the interactive component for um, page two and page three. I've got a little tape I gotta take off here. So that's it, I'll be back soon and we'll start decorating these. Oh, uh, we're going to, before I leave, we're gonna need um, a, ten, a 10 by seven, 10 by seven, you're gonna need two, one for each side. And we're gonna score it in half at five. So you have a 10, uh, a five by seven finished card. You want, you need one for the left and one for the right. And then on the inside for each one, we're gonna have an eight by six. You're gonna fold it in half. So you have a finished four by six card, one for each page. Okay. And uh, when I come back, we'll start decorating these. We're not gonna install them until we get our base backgrounds in, and then we'll lay these on top. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. We're gonna start working on page three, page three. So when I put the interactive flap in, I did page two and three at the same time, and I just put it at the beginning of page two and page three. So you're gonna see both, but um, or you're gonna see it repeated, but I will go over it one more time. Um, you're gonna start with an eight inch, and let me verify it. I wrote it down, but I just wanna verify. That eight inch, by five inch uh, or five by eight inch panel, you're gonna score a half inch on the five inch side, which is gonna leave you with four inches across, uh, four and a half inches across the top. On the bottom, you're gonna come in two inches and put a tick mark. And this is after you folded in um, your half inch gusset <clears throat> or hinge. And then from two inch to four and a half, you're gonna cut along that for your diagonal. Okay, so this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack, and I am going to mimic page two, at least in these major components, and then I'm going to make it a little bit different <clears throat> uh, than page two, um, but they'll flow together very nicely, and since they're on 
you know, opposing sides to each other when, when uh, page two is opened, I think it'll flow together very nicely. So I've mentioned it um, before, but I'll mention it again. One of the things I like about this format, and it is eight by 11 inches, which is the widest I've ever done, um, is you can really feature five by sevens in this, um, and of course, or multiples of four by fours and four by sixes and that sort of thing, but you can definitely get some large photos in here. Sorry for shaking the camera. Okay, so this is the piece that's gonna go here, and you can see it came from this piece. So here I started with, um, four and a half by eight and then trimmed it down a little bit so I would have my nice border and then once I cut my diagonal that's what's going to go over here <laughs> so I'm trying to make use of the diagonals that we're pulling off the main components and I mentioned this uh, before, but I'll mention it again. The complexity in this album isn't going to be with the flaps itself. It's more with the shapes and cutting the shapes in to do some color blocking um, that are going to make it uh, visually um, complex. So it's kind of fun. It's definitely different from my normal roster of things. So it, you can see it's butted right up against this. So I am going to have to trim a little bit off. You gotta shuffle some things around. I was having lunch before I sat down here. Let me get this. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off this edge. So what do I mean by a little bit? I think I keep bumping the camera. I'm sorry, I'm gonna adjust it slightly. This mat is floating on me. It's not staying still. And it's kind of irritating irritating. Maybe I could tape it down. I'll do that next time I take a break. Um, oh, looky there. That looks just right. So I need to ink the edge that I just trimmed. I'm using mahogany. Okay, I got to think for a second about where I'm going to put my magnet. Um... Let's, let's look at the elements that I have lined up so far. So we're gonna have a four by six in here. I think I'll do it this way. Let's go ahead and get this paper lined up and this installed. And then based on how much of this is showing, I'm going to add uh, this five by seven piece. So let's go ahead and, this is backwards from my other process where I had added the cover first and then um, the, uh, four by six, so no, I didn't mention that. Um, this is a four by six, so you're gonna start with an eight by six. You're gonna score it four inches on the eight inch side, and then you're also gonna use a 10 by seven. You're gonna score it five inches, and then each one of these, this is a five by seven card and a four by six card. You're gonna need one of each. Okay, let me line up this paper and we'll get this decorated, get our four by six installed, and then we'll figure out what we're doing next. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so I picked this paper because I want to draw this pattern back in, and it turns out I'm going to be shy a little bit in the corner, so I'm going to solve that problem by placing a triangle here on the top and the bottom. So, because I'm running out of this, at least in the um, 12 by 12 scale, and I didn't want to change the scale. Uh, on the same page. I do it occasionally, but not very often. <clears throat> and once we get this in, we can get the four by six card in, and then we can figure out um, uh, what we're gonna do in terms of the magnet placement before I glue this in. Okay, so that's in, and then I have this, I have a large triangle, and then I have a smaller one. The small one fits almost perfectly, but I don't wanna do just one, and I like the large up here and the small on the bottom, so I think that is what I'm gonna do, a little bit like that. And these may or may not be overlapped by the four by six card, which is right here. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna, they are going to overlap. So 
I'm going to wait and glue these down and they're going to slightly overlap the card that goes here. Okay, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to get on my grid here and I think, yeah, I'm just going to center this. So it's two inches from the top, two inches from the bottom. And that's what I think I'm going to do. Yeah. Thinking about how much is going to be exposed. And this will be the five by seven. Hmm. Let's think about that for a second. Let's I think I'm going to tuck that in, yeah, and have that be just another uh, diagonal. Let me see how much I've got here. And uh, part of the reason I want to know how much I've got go left over is, is whether or not we can get a photo there. As soon as I find my ruler. So that is like three and a half. So that's a little too small for a photo. Or part of a photo. This is a five by seven frame, so I'm gonna to try to get an idea of what that's gonna look like. Hmm. Now the other thing I could do is do this horizontal, which I haven't done on any of the pages yet, and then make this. I mean, make this vertical, this horizontal <coughs> for a change. Hmm. What do you guys think? don't like it. I could do that here too. <clears throat> I do like that. Okay, here's the new plan. I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna put this about right here. I'm gonna do it horizontal instead of vertical, which means it needs to be below Does it? No, I'm going to cut it off. That's going to go in here. This will go in here. Now that I'm going to do it this way, maybe I'll do that. And then this will allow for that. It's too, it's too wide to fit. Never mind. It's going to go this way. Okay, I'm going to figure out my triangles if I have to resize them, I will. Okay, I do want this kind of offset, so that's one inch from the bottom. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So, that's one glue line. There's the other. Okay, now I know I just need to apply glue here. that's in. Okay, now that I know that location, we can decide what to do here. That does not look straight. I'm going to double check. Of course, my mat's kind of wonky. It's one of those mats that folds in half, so it, it's misbehaving. Uh, it's off. 
by about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. <clears throat> I might have to fix that. We're ready to install this piece. Sorry about that interruption. Um, I think I'm going to do this and then we'll do some embellishing from this corner up. Yeah, I like it. So let's draw a line. I'll worry about straightening it up in just a second. on here. I'm going to use my guidelines. I thought I put a mark, but now I don't see it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it disappeared.
That's done. Let's go ahead and start figuring out a couple of things. I'd originally wanted to do something large here, so I think I'm going to do that and I'm just going to cut it and tuck it slightly behind the card. So that's going to go right about there. I'll straighten that out in a little bit. Put my rollers up there, kind of in my way. Uh, I think I'm going to put this one down here. Sorry. Nothing is moving the way I think it should, <laughs> including my hands. I thought I had something bigger than this one, but I don't see it. I'll come back to that. I think we're ready now to figure out our magnet placement. Okay, so I'm gonna place a magnet right here on this corner, and then one here on the base mat. Now, if you're going to do color blocking here, just think about your magnet placement. Now we can go ahead and put this in. Sorry about that. Just to be consistent with uh, page two, I'm going to use this same pattern here, and that'll create that flow that I was talking about between the two pages. This is also from the 12 by 12 collection pack. I got it. You know, I don't know. I don't think I can wait. I'm going to tape this down because <laughs> it won't. I can't seem to stop moving it. Double sided tape's not ideal, but that's what I'm using because it was handy. Okay, that, that's an improvement. Okay, so the inside, I've chosen these patterns. I'm going to go like that, and I'm going to put the stripe in the middle, because I think it's cool. So we're going to do the stripes first, and then we're going to trim these two pieces to fit. And this goes together, so you could reverse it easily, if you like the stripe better as a background. I 
these were cut directly from each other so I'm just trying to make sure sorry I have to keep waking up my computer because I'm uploading to YouTube right now and if it falls asleep it stops and uploading in the middle of the day is not ideal it's super slow Okay, now I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. Let's go ahead and mark it. Good night. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that one more time. shortened a little. No, it's just the ink. This is from the 8x8, eight eight. sorry, I forgot to mention that. And that looks lovely. Okay, so we need to decorate the back. And I probably should have decorated that before I laid it down, but it is what it is. We're gonna go with it as it is. Now I'm gonna decide whether or not I want this or this. I think I'm gonna go with this one. A little more monochromatic. And then I can do introduce a third color of my choice. The other thing I like about it is reinforcing this corner, although it's pretty rigid. <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to pick the back sides and then the inside. 
and then we're going to do some embellishing. So I need a few minutes to line those papers up and I'll be right back and do a little housekeeping. Back in a minute. Okay, I've got a couple of things lined up here and I'm ready to go. And I'm going to share that with you guys now. Okay, so we did this the last time we were together. So now we're ready to do the inside. So this is the 6x6 six six and I chose this pattern. It is from the 8x8 eight eight collection pack. And then this is what I'm going to use for the background here, and it would have been easier to put this on prior to gluing it down, but I just cut a slight diagonal. It's going to tuck right in behind us. Yeah. Six uh, eight by eight collection pack. This is pretty easy because this was not glued down yet. Okay, but now that that's in, we can glue the rest of this down. There's no reason to have it loose. Now the inside, um, this is from the 12 by 12. I think that looks beautiful. It's very bright and colorful. Let me make sure we have the right size. Yes. That's right side up. Now we have one more, I think, one small bit that we need to decorate on the front, and that's the back of the 4x6, and I'm going to use this piece right here. So now, the other thing I did while I was away is I took this journaling card. Let me find the one. It's not this one anymore. Somewhere. <laughs> Anyways, this is a journaling card, and I cut out the center. And I can't find the one that I didn't cut. So that I could show you what what it looked like. Um, at any rate, I I cut it out and I left the flowers on the edge. So I cut out the main body and then left the flowers on the edge. Then I laid it on um, a piece of cardstock that had a half inch on either side and an extra half inch on the edge. And then I traced my corners, removed this, and then cut out the center. So I have an open frame. Now I'm going to glue this down. And I don't know why I can't find the, uh, oops, there's nothing behind the flowers. Okay, and I have the opening toward the top, but it's really a preference. could be the side, just not the bottom. Thank you. 
Okay, now we have an open frame, and I'm going to place that right here. So I'm going to go ahead and fold these in, burnish them, and then we're going to put this down. Last time I used glue, this time I think I'll, I'll do my normal tape. Oops. Dangerous. I just want to minimize um, the number of layers of paper that um, this has to pass through to get to the magnet. And so ideally this is going to have a photo in it, so it won't be a lot to pass through. So now I'm just looking for visual balance. I think I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to start looking to make sure that my edges are square with the book. Black on gray is not easy. <laughs> I'm not liking that. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. Let's see if I can't get the some of the tape started. Or I can draw a line here. Let's draw a corner. Okay, there it is. Good grief, I just got too much junk on my desktop. There we go. I'm liking it. Okay, now I'm going to do an insert for this. I didn't put um, cardstock on the back of that. Maybe that's a mistake. I'm not sure because it does feel 
a little flimsy. So I might uh, just cut like a circle and stick behind it just to make it a little bit more rigid. And then we don't have to worry about it. And I've got my punch right here. I've got a one and a quarter and a one inch. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm less worried up here. This just feels a little too exposed. Let me see if I can't find a piece of scrap. I think that feels a lot better, so I'm going to straighten the edge and glue it in. Okay, should be good. Now I'm going to get an insert. That was a one and a quarter inch punch, by the way. Kind of like that. There we go. Okay. I like it. Let's see, should we put two photo mats there? Let's see what kind of room we have to work with. Yes, we should. I'm going to do two four by fours. There we go. Let's try it this way. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm crazy about that. So I'm going to think about that a little bit more. If I decide to put these in, these photo mats in, I'm going to cover it with pattern paper so that before you put your photos in, it looks much more appealing. And then you have a choice of whether or not you use both of these for a mat or not. You could put a photo up here and you could use this for journaling space. So then you would have that option. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut and back a couple more triangles to add here and there uh, to make it a little bit more interesting. And then that is essentially page three. Okay guys, back soon with page four and five.